So that's that's clomid and clomiphene. <clears throat> Now we'll talk about ACG. ACG, like I said earlier, um, it's going to be working on mimicking LH. And that's LH is what talks to your testes to produce testosterone. And in our metaphor earlier, your brain asks for 10. You have your 10. And then we're going to go ahead and add another 10. Okay. So instead of producing 10, we're going to go ahead and produce 20. Now that 20 is going to go back up to the brain and then the brain is going to say, okay, we got too much. We didn't ask for this much. Let's send, let's downregulate the signal. So then we don't get that 10 from the brain and then you're left now with 10 and then you're left with 10. Now this is dose dependent. And again, these are just generalizations. I've seen different things in different guys. It doesn't seem like it always works this way for some guys. It, it shuts this down and other guys, it seems like it doesn't. Again, I'd be really interested to hear about your guys' experience, especially other practitioners, um, what they see that the AC does. Um, so ACG, human chorionic gonadotropin, this is actually produced by, uh, in women's bodies when they are, when they're, uh, pregnant. This is what you do a urinary ACG pregnancy test in women. Like I said, it, it mimics LH is the way we're looking at it. Dose wise is going to vary. I do a hundred. I use three times a week. It's just enough to keep my testicular function going. And, and I'm, I'm fertile. I've done a sperm test. Um, you know, if you're on TRT interested and I have affiliate link below to do at home sperm testing and, you know, funny story though, you know, these doses are, they're all over the place. Some guys, the theory is that because we're stimulating ACG versus like testosterone, that you have more five alpha reductase and you have more aromatase in the testes. So if you are endogenous, remember creating it in the body, you may get more uh, estrogen and DHT. So sorry, I'm skipping down here. And that can be good or bad, you know, for, for mood, for drive and, and motivation. So I usually just try and give guys, if they're running this with testosterone to remain fertile, I just do the, the least, uh, the least amount that is needed. Now, if you run at monotherapy, I think I saw a study at Baylor where they're doing like 3000 IUs a day. I, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I think most guys are going to be fertile at 250, 500. I, uh, I use every other day. Um, and one thing with that, you would need to be mindful about the half-life. And I, again, I already talked about this. This is actually going to make you more fertile. Clomid's going to make you more fertile. ACG is going to make you more fertile. It's going to help with the ejaculatory volume and your testicular size, where TRT will talk about does the opposite. Now, the other thing to be mindful of <clears throat> is that when you mess your fertility up, when you're on TRT and you shut this whole axis down, we didn't talk about this much yet. LH and FSH not only increase testosterone and estrogen, but they're also responsible for your fertility and creating sperm. And when you are on TRT and this all gets shut off, which we'll talk about, you basically kill all your sperm. And now, and again, someone else who maybe researches this can give a more detailed analysis. This is just my experience and, in, and in kind of putting the physiology together is that I think about this sperm, like a seed that you plant in the backyard. And when you go on TRT, you go out there and you, you basically kill all your sperm instantly. And spermatogenesis is 70 to 90, 120, you know, it just depends on what source you're looking at, but most places are going to say your sperm takes about 70 days to develop. So if you, you know, wipe your boys out with TRT, you're not going to be fertile for two, three, maybe even four months. It depends on a wide variety of factors. So with that being said, though, when you, you know, like if you've been on TRT and you get on ACG for fertility, you have to make sure that you're taking this consistently because if you don't, if you stop taking it, you're basically going to let, it's kind of like I tell guys, you put a seed in the backyard, you got to water it every day. If you don't water it for a week, they're going to die. And then you got to start all over. So that's why you need to be mindful of this half-life being two to three days. In my experience, um, I've had a couple of guys, they miss doses for a week or two, like they, they travel. And that does seem like it's enough that they basically have to start the whole spermato uh, spermatogenesis process over again. And again, that's specifically when we're using ACG with TRT. Now we already, we already talked about the pros then you stay fertile and compared to, to TRT, 
Um, it does seem like you do get more DHD estradiol at similar levels. Like if you could get your testosterone to a thousand on ACG and you get to a thousand on TRT, my experience, their DHT and estrogen can be, um, ratioly higher. Again, I'd be super happy to hear other practitioners or other guys who've been running their blood to see what that, that works on, um, how that looks on them. The cons are, it does seem like it dose dependently shuts down the HPA axis. Now, with that being said, depends on what your goals are. So, and then again, I don't see it being as powerful as TRT for symptom resolution. I don't, you know, um, one thing I often tell guys is, especially younger guys, we'll start monotherapy. We'll do an enclomiphene or an ACG. You know, as a naturopathic doctor, our, our philosophy is you meet the patient where they're at. I'm not going to come in and, you know, obviously if you're arguing with me, it's not like you're going to listen to me anyways. So, you know, guys like, say he's 35, 40. He's like, you know, I don't want to go on TRT yet. So we do in or ACG first. Maybe we do that for a year or two. Almost all of them eventually end up going on TRT and their feedback is, oh, doc, this is what I thought. Like you, you'll feel better. Most guys will feel better on ACG and clomiphene. And if I didn't have access to TRT, I, I would probably do one or the other. I feel pretty good on in clomiphene monotherapy. But ultimately, I feel way better on TRT. And most of the guys that come to me, symptom resolution is is often a lot better on ACG. Okay, last but not least, we just go straight to the big daddy, actual TRT. 